Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. I can't believe it. This is the fifth video on this fine specimen of a wannabe chainsaw, or Poulan wild thing. So, you can, we did the cuts with it, with and without modifications, and then with the new chain here. You can see that each modification helped. The only thing in the last cut with this new chain here, the saw is still a little underpowered, so running a fairly sharp chain like this and work it kind of hard. But anyway, just want to talk about these little saws here and where they came from. little homeowner saws became a huge seller for most of the manufacturers and this is the saw that started it all Power Max 6 McCulloch came out in 1968 it's 33 cc's and for the homeowner and light farm use this was really an ideal little saw powerful fast cutting but like all little saws a little bit finicky some worse than others but uh, I had a comment here a while back that a guy was an engineer for McCulloch and when this saw came out, like I say, it sold like wildfire, but it was fairly expensive to make and so his job was to come up with a cheaper version. And so what they came up with was the Minimax series. And these sold for huge volumes, clear to the end of production, 1999. And the one thing that these have over other little saws, they have a manual oiler on them, an overriding oiler. And that's why I use these almost exclusively anymore. Because if you're in a hard cut or a dirty cut, you can pump that lever and put extra oil on the bar and the chain, picks up the RPM, cuts much better doesn't stress out the saw. These are only 33 cc so you can't expect too much. But. And the other thing that's interesting on the little Mini Max, yeah they had a bunch of different names for them. Mac Cat and Mac 110, 130. They cut the horsepower on them a little bit as time went on but they still really did the job. And when you have these little saws, I'll go through a bunch of them here, each one has its own peculiarities. These are finicky like most of them. Not as bad as some. But these do not like running in hot weather. They vapor lock easily and performance drops off. And If you ran them at 40 to 1 like I said, you're looking for a seizure. They just won't stay together. So that's why I run these at 20 to 1. Here's a Poulan. This is a Model 25, sold as a skill saw. And these sold huge. They were really cheap. And a lot of people got into the using chainsaws because of these. You could buy them at the hardware store, whatnot. And they're a nice handy little size. And all of the little saws I've run are all powerful. But the little Poulans, or Poulans I call them. They're probably the most finicky of all of them. They're really sensitive to temperature and air density and whatnot. Now this one was given to me by a friend. He had about 55 acres of trees and when they'd have a big windstorm, he and his wife would go out and I'd go out and help him too. Was cut firewood. He really liked these saws, but when he went to the hardware store, he always bought two of them because he knew one would run good and the other would be a part saw because they hardly ever ran at all. And the problem with the Poland's these little saws was quality control. If you got a Monday or a Friday saw, it was a piece of <laughs> But they're powerful and lightweight and easy to hold and work, work with. So here's a bigger cousin. They're sold by Sears. This one is 38cc and it has manual and 
automatic oiling, which is pretty good for a cheap old oil and saw. It also had power sharp, which <coughs> Oregon came out with at one time and had a little lever and stuff so you could sharpen the chain as the chain went around, but took a special chain and it was obsolete for a long time and I see that they've just reintroduced it on some of the little crummy saws again but it was a mistake then it's a mistake now but the thing with these little pullins like I say you get a good one or a no good one I've got the smaller version of that this one and this one they have very few hours on them and they're always something wrong with them they don't run good and pick them up and cut for a while and set them down they don't want to restart or they start running erratic and stuff like that, but this one must have been a factory reject because this thing ran for years after my friend quit working outside because of his health. He gave me this saw and it was old then and I used it for years and finally it's actually worn to the point where the crank seals are bad and just doesn't want to run anymore but I'm not going to rebuild it. I get other good saws, small saws like this, like the Mini Max, that are just a whole lot better. So this is kind of a weird little saw. It's called a Dynamark. It took, us, it took me a while to figure out who made it. It's 33cc, but it was made by Lombard. And power-wise, it's the equivalent to the Mac 35, but there's zero parts for them, so it's just kind of a neat knick-knack. You know, and the sm small saws again, I mean, there are a lot of companies tried making them, and a lot of them failed. This was a failure here. This is uh, made by Olsen and Rice, which their claim to fame was some of the finest model airplane motors ever made. These things are toads. This is 22cc, and the motor in it was actually designed for model airplanes. It actually has the mounting ears on it still. These were sold over a whole bunch of different names. And uh, this one was a Sears version. I've got one that says Runyon on it. Ford Motor Company used to sell them as a promo item when you bought a new car. But these are probably the worst of the bunch. They had a lousy ignition system and a carburetor they had was no good either. But the thing that's interesting is gear drive because it pulls backwards. But when this company quit making these saws, they also had a little outboard motor, a generator, a hand saw, mm -hmm. other drill, a bunch of other little things. They sold the design to the company in Japan called TAS Tanaka. And they redesigned the uh, ignition and the carburetor. They brought it back as the weed eater. It sold like bazillions of them. The basic motor on these is excellent. It's just the accessory stuff on them was no good. But, so the type of saws that if you're a collector you should have you should have good, bad, and no good and this is the no good one but each has its part in history and you, you work on them and stuff like that you learn all kinds of new techniques you know become a lot better mechanic if you have some of these lousy saws to work on and, uh, this little home light super 2 I used these for a really long time and they're a 32 cc saw and they made some up I had a 40 cc one that I used for a long time too and the thing with these uh, they're not as powerful as the other small saws but they're not finicky and so if you're looking for a little saw to do stuff around the place there and you got a little bit of mechanical skill this is one I'd recommend because they made so many of them, parts are still available for them. And they're just not finicky, they're just a nice little saw. I quit using them because the Mini Mac McCulloughs are a whole lot more powerful and they have the overriding oiler for the barn chain, which for the type of wood I cut really makes a big difference how they perform. <coughs> this one, this is a Pioneer P20. There again, it's a little homeowner saw. These were probably one of the best little saws. There again, hot weather they don't like, they'll vapor lock because the fuel tank is all metal and it's right on the crankcase. And so 
the, the cool weather too, but it doesn't run, run real high RPM, about 8500 is all with no load on it, but these are excellent little saw too, so if you wanted something, there's still lots of these around. Parts available, it's not very good on them though. So anyway, so what I'm going to talk about here these little saws and I've got a category for them okay well this is my designation for these saws and pop saw does that stand for popular could be but that isn't it because they sold lots and lots of these but what it really means is piece of poo because they're really you know what but I recommend these for anybody at collects chainsaws because if you can figure out how to keep them running for a while, your mechanical skills are going to be upgraded dramatically. So working on a bigger good saw is going to be a piece of cake. So those are the what I call the low end saws. And these, I don't call them pop saws, but SPS, sort of poop saws. So anyway, getting back to this, which started all this silliness. And uh, it's amazing how many people have comments on these saws. Lots of them have spent lots of time hopping them up and doing all kinds of stuff, you know, it's just a typical American hot rodder. If you don't have an old flathead Ford, you're going to figure out all these things, put tri-power on it and headers and different ignition system and all kinds of stuff, hot cam. Well, these saws are the same way. You get a marginal saw like this and, you know, you go through it and see all the weak points on it and start modifying them, which we did, so... And like I say, the biggest improvement was opening up, let some air in these things that are really restrictive. And then the exhaust, I may have gone overboard and done a little bit too much, so I'll go back and show the times. And it seemed to me like it didn't cut quite as good with the mods here, so I might weld up a couple of holes and redo it. But we're going to be doing a little bit longer test on this thing because the... Uh, I'm going to have been running the Red Armor Echo Oil and it's supposed to remove carbon and if you go back and watch some of our earlier videos it's got pretty substantial carbon on the top of the piston and I've cleaned the port and the muffler and all that stuff so anyway we'll be back here in a bit well we've done our first performance modification this is a stock cover and this is where the air filter goes it's extremely restrictive so we got another top cover here. We put these holes in here to let the air in. And it was interesting when I first fired it up, the idle was way up, so it was getting a lot more air. So we'll get it warmed up and we'll do some time cuts with it. And when we come back next, we'll be doing a muffler mod on it and time that too. So right now everything's pretty much stock except for the modification of the air filter cover. Still got the safety chain and stuff on it. So, we'll be right back when the saw's warmed up. just that one mod I can tell it's a lot more powerful so we'll be back when we're doing a muffler mod 
So I'll just do a little brief history on how I ended up with this saw. I've been talking on some of my older videos about Polans or Poolans and how to tell which is which. And a guy that has another YouTube channel, Kane's Custom Garage, thought it would be funny to send me this saw and give me a challenge to see if I could make it run. <laughs> so anyway, we're trying to figure out what to do with it. It's, you know, I'm not going to use it a lot because compared to the Mini Mac McCullough, it doesn't cut it. So we were just talking about different things. Yeah, what should we do with that saw? And I thought, yeah, I come up with a great idea. And uh, yeah, we usually take chainsaws and engines and stuff to the vintage tractor and engine shows. And a lot of the old, since we're in a logging community, a lot of the old timers come over and talk about their big old McCulloch SP-125s and big home lights and later on stills and huskies and stuff like that. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'll put this out with at the end of the table with my really good saws on it. And the idea is that when they come over, they'll get a good laugh. Because if I had this and some of my other poo saws out there, they'd come over and start laughing at me. So just by putting one or two out there, they can come up and laugh with me. And so, since this is now a show saw, they wasted a lot of money and got a brand new wild thing bar for it. And the new chain is already on it. We did that on that last cut. So anyway, it'd be interesting to see what kind of laughter and giggles we get at the shows with it. Because the sign I'm going to put with it is the worst chainsaw ever made with a question mark. And then people can come over and argue about it. So anyway, it'd be nice to see some fist fights out there at the shows. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well we got the muffler off into different pieces here. If you have one of these saws, the Craftsman version, or any of them, these two little areas right here are the only place the exhaust comes out, and it's really restrictive. I had a bunch of carbon in them when I first looked at it, but it's a simple fix to modify it. Let's take a screwdriver here. Stick it down in there and open them up. That substantially increased the area where the exhaust can come out. And then on the cover here, put some holes in here. And so anyway, we'll get it back together and go out and do a cut and see how much better it does. check our times and figure out what made the best modification. Okay, well, our last modification on the saw, we put a brand new Oregon chain on here. It's a non-safety chain, so it's just a standard 3 8 Oregon low-profile chain. So we'll do four cuts with that and see how it does. see it doesn't cut for beans when you put the chain on backwards. I got in a hurry, got interrupted and ran back and just threw it on without looking. So anyway, fire it up here. Well, he 
can see when I put the chain on backwards I wasn't paying attention. I get the picture of the chain here going the right direction, so best to follow directions. Anyway, so we'll call that good for today. The wild thing, which is really the mild thing. So we'll see you on the next video. Vintage is good, even if it's no good. <laughs>